everybody, it's Slappy McPhee from The Retro Arena and we are here today to go through the unpackaging and assembly of the new Rochambeau Super Famicom case presented to us by Pine. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Pine for sponsoring us. Uh, we've been doing some work on an actual build for the Rock Pro 64. We'll go over the specs of this as well while we're tearing into this. So go ahead and let's uh, get started. First of all, I do want to say that this is my first unboxing or assembly video, so please bear with me. So here we have the Rochambeau case itself. And as you can see, it's been designed to be something similar to what we're used to seeing as a Super Famicom. On the front, we've got two USB ports. Nothing going on this side. On the rear, we're going to go ahead and have our HDMI ports and power, uh, audio, etc. And then on the side, we do have a micro SD card slot. So there will be another video that I'm going to be presenting for being able to install the Raspberry Pi 3. We do not have a Rock 64 board, however, it should be fairly similar. So, we'll go ahead and go over the instruction sheet with the parts list. This will be something that will be included, uh, we've been told, when you purchase your kit. And to be clear, depending upon what you purchase with your kit will determine what other parts or components that you get. But I'll be going over uh, a couple items here as well um, that didn't ship with this kit specifically. However, they are add-ons for this board. So we have the top of the case and one thing to be uh, careful of is that as you can see the reset button kind of sinks a little bit however it does not come out. This is your eject for the SD, excuse me, SSD or hard drive uh, cartridge port. There will be cartridges that we'll be adding in and to another video later uh, in a week or two, but those have not arrived to us yet. So as you can see, here's your reset button. Uh, we've got the power button, which sits separately, so just be aware of that. It actually sits on the power switch itself and will enable and disable power. We've got the circuit board PCB. So with this circuit board PCB, you're gonna to wanna to be careful when you're taking this apart because there are pins on each side of the front USB ports to help lock the board in place along with the screws in the rear. So you wanna go ahead and gently release and pull them out at an angle. And we have the base of the case itself and you can see here an add-on board that has connectors on it for the extension that you're going to have on your USB-C and it extends that USB-C connection as well as the third USB port. Along with it you're also going to get all your cables and your screws. There are two packages of screws, they are color-coded and annotated, you have yellow and green. And like I said, they are annotated here as item number two and then item number seven. And then we have our other cables that we're going to be connecting. Got that USB extension cable. And then the other USB cable that goes in the rear and then a couple other cables here as well as a twisted set cable. Now taking a look at the instruction sheet as you can see we've got one page that does the physical connections excuse me uh, the physical assembly and then the second page at least in the case of the Rock Pro 64 which we have here today you have your schematic for the actual wiring cable. So along with the, this case we have a 
fan kit that came with it. And it is a small heat sink with the embedded fan. And then it also comes with a thermal pad that we'll be applying. And now we get to the board itself. And this is the Rock Pro 64. The specs, we'll go ahead and go over those quick before the assembly. We've got a system on the chip, RK3399 by Rock Chip. It's a hexa-core processor with two ARM Cortex-A72 cores up to two gigahertz and four Cortex-A53 cores. The GPU is an ARM Mali T860MP4. Memory configurations are either a two gigabit or four gigabit LPDDR3. As you can see that these are soldered to the main board. They are not removable or replaceable. For storage options, you have the EMMC flash module, which that connects right here. And then you've got your micro SD card, which can be bootable. And the micro SD card slot, if you can see it, is here on the underside. And as stated, you can access that externally. Right, you're not gonna be able to access the EMMC, of course. And it also has 128 uh, Mbit SPI flash. The video has the HDMI 2.0 output. It has an EDP connector, a, an MIPI connector, a TP connector, backlight supply, display port via USB Type-C. The USB Type-C port sits underneath the USB 3 port and then we have our two USB 2.0s. We have two physical buttons here. We have our audio jack. This is your PCIe port. Uh, it also has the ability for a camera and parallel CSI and two MIPI CSIs. It has a debugging three pin serial header. For expansion, we've got the, the 40 pin GPIO header. And then already stated, we've got the PCIe or, or excuse me, X4 slot. Uh, we've got the ability for the IR receiver. And then the power supply is a 12 volt DC input power barrel jack, which we've got right here actually. Go ahead and get this pull it over. Standard barrel jack. Uh, this is a three amp power supply, 12 volt and depending upon where you're located you'll want to be sure that you get the correct module for the receptacle itself. The dimensions of the board are 133 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 19 millimeters. What I have here is their Wi-Fi module that you can go ahead and get connected if you'd like to use that. Um, that connects here on the board, All right? However, uh, I will not be connecting that as I do not personally use the Wi-Fi. I prefer Ethernet for connectivity. And then we've got here an EMMC module. Now, uh, depending upon, once again, how you order your pack, uh, you might not get an EMMC module. You may not get the Wi-Fi. However, you should be receiving the fan uh, for uh, the board itself. And then in this case, just for the, this tutorial, I've got an old Hitachi 80 gigabyte drive that I'm gonna go ahead and use to just show you and demonstrate uh, using that SATA port. All right. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and grab this base. We're going to go ahead and grab the board. And nothing to be really concerned with worrying about cleaning here on the bottom. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and be careful as before I actually get this clamped in just to show you. 
hopefully you can see you've got a bracket brace style here built into the casing itself and then over here we've got what is to be relatively stiff but can be flexed clips so you're going to go ahead and want to get the board brought in make sure that it kind of comes in here at an angle and then you get it locked in with those clips and then of course obviously there's also the screws that will help secure the board so we'll go ahead and move the bag out of the way just be careful of course if this is your first time uh, working with this kind of stuff that you're really careful with the GPIO pins or the other pins on the headers so that you don't possibly run into a situation where you're damaging or bending those pins. So you want to make sure that these holes are lined up when you go to get this locked in and you can gently press down. It may take a little bit of prying. So we now have it locked in, as you can see, hopefully, we are resting over the board with those clips, and then you should be able to hopefully see as well that we're lined up with the screw holes. Now since this case is designed to be able to work with multiple boards, that's one of the reasons why you're not going to necessarily see all of the holes lining up. So just be aware of that, uh, that you're not running into a problem just because you should have three of these lined up to be able to work for you just fine. And as you can see, hopefully in the video, even though I've got this clamped down, the board can move around until we do get those screws in place. So talking about the screws, we're going to go ahead and get our number two screws out, which are the yellow bag. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver to complete this part of the task, of course. Now these aren't threaded, so you just want to be really careful because you're going to be self-threading while you're going. just want to snug the screws down to hold it in place. You don't want to go too tight because you could actually crack the circuit board. Excuse me, the PCB. And now we've got all three screws in. The board is nice and secure and tight. Alright, so now we have these screws in place and the next step will be to go ahead and get this heat sink installed. So you can kind of trust that this is clean, however I'm not going to um, take any chances, right? So I actually have with me some isopropanol and I'm going to go ahead and clean off both the CPU And the heat sink just to be completely sure that we don't have any types of fuzz or fingerprints oil from from fingers etc and I'm actually using I know that some people use a paper towel I'm using a microfiber So as you can see here, right, we've got a square printed onto the board and that's where you're going to need to put this thermal sheet. Now these sheets can be kind of a pain. Want to be super careful, try not to get your fingers all over it. Get it applied onto the 
bored and laid over. Gently, you may want to actually kind of keep a little bit of pressure as you peel, but as you can see, it, it likes to come with it. So you want to be make sure that you're staying relatively slow and let it lay there. Now, when you're going to, to place this, right, you're going to look at this and go, okay, well, I can put it in this way. Or do I put it in the other way? Well, this is our two pin fan header. So we're going to want to go ahead and place it so that the power cables are exiting towards the USB ports. Gently place it down. Apply a little bit of pressure. I would apply it on the heat sink itself. And you want to go ahead and snap this in. Be careful to hold it so that it doesn't move around on you and you're going to hear it kind of clip and pop. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and actually flip this over here where it says fan. There's a little notch on it if you're not familiar with this kind of stuff. On the connector itself, you want to go ahead and make it so that notch slides right down into the little housing. Not sure if you can see it on the video, but there it is. Alright, so we now have the fan connected. All right, so we're back after a little bit of uh, technical difficulties regarding the cabling, get this all figured out. So one of the things that I would strongly suggest you do is remember or realize that these cables are pretty stiff, right? So, you know, you just kind of want to give them a little bit of, of a motion because they'll be stiff just from fabrication, right? Um, and it's going to feel as if some of these cables may be too tight, however, as long as you're careful, obviously, and you pay attention to what you're doing, um, you'll be fine. So per the diagram, we're going to go ahead and connect the what with the white wires on this wiring harness to the very beginning of the GPIO header uh, closest to the HDMI port. Let that sit down there to the side. You've got your USB extension and I suggest that you kind of give this just a little bit of a flexing here to kind of help route it properly. So you're going to want to be very careful since this is the bottom port and we're going to go ahead and connect into the USB on the board and once you get it pushed in you'll notice that it'll be a physical click and then I recommend that you actually route it around this post. And then we'll go ahead and get it connected to the rear. Once again, you should hear and feel a click. And now we're going to go ahead and pre-position these other cables uh, for the USB ports. So the next one is going to be the USB 2.0 port, and it's going to go into the top port on the board. Once again, be careful. It's going to have to go in an angle. Make sure that you give this a little bit of a bend, right? Bring that around and then now this is your USB 3 cable that will actually route up to the top PCB and this is what provides connectivity for that drive if you choose to go ahead and plug a drive in there. So once again we're going to go ahead and get connected in, a little bit of a click and you may need to kind of once again kind of give this a little bit of a flex and bend because it's got a memory from being fabricated.
So now when you go ahead to install the top PCB, you do want to be careful. There are a pair of pins up here as a reminder to help hold the board in place. But we want to go ahead and make sure that these USB cables are not in the way. And we're going to angle the board into place over those pins. And you should see and feel that the board's now in place. What I suggest you do is to actually get this rear screw installed. And it will just help to keep the board from moving on you. And as previously discussed, don't forget, do not over tighten. We just want to snug down. Since I'm back here. And you know what? I'm not going to go ahead and redo this take, but I don't need to. Alright, so we're all set here. Now, that A cable, which is underneath and is the top USB 2 port, actually swings around here to this back port on the front side. And we install it with a little teeth facing upward okay and then this will be actually going from here to there however before we install that we want to go ahead and get this cable installed and this one can be a little bit challenging so you just want to be really careful and gently guide it into place get it in there and get it seated and then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the last cable tuck it underneath it's my suggestion again you want to do it so that the little clips are on excuse me little guides are on the top and you want to feel a physical click on it on all of these when they when they plug in you want to of course be sure that you plug in this cable with the white facing up and feel the clip and get that button in place. All right, so now, before you actually put the rest of your screws in, you've seen that I've done a dry fitment. You wanna be sure that everything seems to sit correctly, right? So we can see that our USB ports are properly aligned and we want to just take a look all the way around we see that our other ports are aligned and go ahead and secure the top PCB All right, so now at this point, you shouldn't have any screws left from the yellow bag. If you do, definitely go back and check. And take a look again at your instruction sheet. They're all annotated here, right? We've got the three for our board itself, and then the, the six for the PCB on top. So now, go ahead and get that power button back down on there. secured and we're going to need to flip it over you may want to go ahead and put something underneath it so it doesn't get scratched 
and we've got just the four screws left. And you should feel that they snug down. Once again, you don't want to over tighten, but especially things like this, I prefer to work my way around. All right, so we have it now assembled. Power button, you can feel that it clicks correctly. And then once again, for the sake of demonstration, um, you don't have to have one of the cartridges, but um, you know, in this case, um, I'm not sure if they're going to be releasing specialty cartridges for actual hard drives. However, you can clip the drive in and button ejects which I would not recommend of course obviously that you eject during operation you always want to make sure that the power is shut off but uh, that concludes the assembly video uh, I hope that you found it informative and we'll see you guys on the next one